Welcome back to Dream Builders. I'm Scott Morgan outside of Montreal, Quebec. One of the more practical aspects of McGill University's next home is its modularity. Entire floors can be altered to fit the needs of a particular buyer. But modularity rarely extends to moving an entire home. In our next story, Steve Greenberg visits a Nantucket homeowner who wouldn't let a foundation stand in his way as we look at the art and science of moving a house. It's moving day for the Hoffmans, or more specifically, for the Hoffmans' house, as 37 Low Beach Road moves to 8 Gideon Circle. Take a good look. You don't get to see this every day. A truck pulling a 56-ton house resting atop 14 tons of steel. Truly, you do look at it and say, wow, it's incredible. Well, it's, uh, it's certainly the biggest mobile home I've ever seen, but uh, uh, it, is, it is kind of amazing that something that, that, that weighs what this house weighs can actually move down the road on wheels. It's incredible to watch. This charming 1930s house on Nantucket off the New England coast is being moved because the property it was built on is now more valuable without such a modest house on it. Instead, the owners will build a multi-million dollar beachfront house at the old address, and the original 2,400 square foot home will be put on a less valuable piece of land about a quarter of a mile away. Then it'll be sold. Even though this house move costs about $60,000, homeowner Tony Hoffman says it makes sense. Well, the economics of moving a house are very compelling. Uh, you already have a house. Uh, uh, it's worth a, a fair amount of money when you put, plop it down on its foundation and, and backfill and landscape and get it all done. It can be resold immediately. You don't have the, the year of construction. Uh, so it, it's economically, it's very advantageous. Now, getting a house to move is no easy task. A few days before the move, the house is disconnected from everything. Gas, electric, water, sewer, cable, everything. After burrowing around the house for a workspace, large holes are knocked out of the foundation at specific points so that support beams can be placed beneath the house. The steel I-beams are crisscrossed under the floor joists and form sort of a lattice shelf which will hold the house as it's lifted and then moved. Wood 4x4s and cribbing fill the space between the ground, the steel, and the house. To lift the house, hydraulic jacks are strategically placed under the steel shelf. Toscana Corporation's Carl Jellamy says it's critical that the jacks work together. We use a set of hydraulic jacks. It's a unified jacking machine. All the jacks are all tied to one hydraulic unit, pressurized, and then it all goes up as one unit. Doesn't rock or roll or anything like that. It just comes up perfectly level. The house is lifted slowly and carefully to keep it level. Once it's several feet off the foundation, it's maneuvered onto special load leveling dollies, hooked up to a tractor trailer, and towed off the property. This move is fairly simple. The homeowners had permission to cut through a neighbor's side yard to shorten the trip onto the open road, which in this case is free of obstacles that can complicate house moves, such as overhead utility lines or traffic. And most important, this house fits on the roadway. It can be moved in one piece. All the while, the load is kept absolutely level. Since the furnishings move right along with the house, even the knickknacks stay safely in the cabinets. Well, it seems amazing that everything can stay in place and, and nothing will get broken, but after you watch the move and you see how slowly everything goes, you realize that there's nothing in danger. Though this move goes without incident, there are horror stories of homes slipping off of dollies or shifting loads, sometimes resulting in significant damage. So although Carl's been doing this without mishap for years, he is insured just in case. Now this is ultimately where the house is going to end up, this hole. Now this hole is going to be the basement. The house will be placed over the hole. It'll rest on this cribbing. A mason will come in, he'll put in a basement, build in a foundation, then the steel's removed, the cribbing's removed, and this is where the house is going to sit. And when it's finished, the house should be better than ever. When you pick a house up and move it, you can fix a lot of its problems. It didn't have a basement where it was, and it's now going to, which means we can move the washer and the dryer and the furnace downstairs and get all the utilities into the basement, create extra storage. We can shore up the foundation underneath and put new support beams, so it gets better when it moves. Carl Jellamy has moved about 150 houses, and he says each time, it's a kick. 
our main line of work is site work, excavation and whatnot, and that gets very old, you know. It's just you dig a hole and you fill it in, you know, septic systems, roads. It's, it gets very mundane. This here, it's, uh, I, I really enjoy it. It's, it's, I don't know, it's tough to put in words, but just, it's exciting. Besides the excitement of moving a house and the practicality of the cost, there's also something rewarding about salvaging this bit of history. Keeping the original structure, particularly this house, which has a lot of character, uh, was very, very important in the move. After all, saving a piece of the past can be a moving experience. Thank you.